Hey, I'm Anthony, and there's only one thing I like more than fishing, and that's catching. Welcome to OC Outdoorsman. Look at that. Look at that wing. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is now 7 27 a.m. And as you can see, it's uh, it's actually drizzling this morning. But this rain should stop within the next hour or so, so it's not too bad. But I'm back here at Dana Point, just launched out of Baby Beach. But it doesn't look like these clouds are going to go away. It's going to be a bit cooler. It's not even going to get into the uh, mid-70s out here around the beach area. So it should be nice all day long. As I traveled into open water past the break wall, look what I stumbled upon. That is the SS Catch Lot. This is the boat that captures all the live sardines for the bait barge here at Dana Point. Right now they're chumming the water so you can see all the, the seagulls and birds flying around and in the water are a bunch of sea lions, but yeah, they didn't venture too far away. We were right next to the jetties. And if you look in the background here, we were just outside of the entrance to the harbor. Oh man, something just slammed my sabiki rig. It came off, ugh. That was probably a calico bass. All right, first mackerel of the morning. Bait's pretty big this morning. But they are greenbacks, so that's a plus. All right, time to troll this live mackerel. He is, uh, oh man, this is a big boy. Finally got him on a trap rig. Holy cow. What a pain. It's a big mackerel. There's another big landmark. That's the red buoy where the seals like to hang out. It's just in front of the boiler rocks, further out west. There. Can you hear that fog horn? Oh man. Well, I'm back in front of Salt Creek and I'm right at the beginning of high tide. So all the kelp is submerged. 
not going to be able to latch on and fish for sheephead. It's a bummer. Well, I trolled all the way out here, no bites. I was hoping to fish the kelp, the kelp beds here, but everything is now submerged. Alright, guess what? I brought shrimp with me and my wife soaked them in sea salt, so these should be a little tougher than last time. So they should stay on the hook longer. Hopefully I won't be losing as many. After scanning the water for a bit, I thought I spotted some kelp floating on the surface, so I decide to investigate. Fingers crossed. Oh, this looks good. This might be a real extra long part of a kelp. Kelp bed. Yeah, I think this is good. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Oh, that's on the wrong side of my boat, though. Dang it. Yeah, that's a legit piece. Legal sheep head. I'm letting him, letting him go. I'm not keeping fish today. This is a female sheep head and I caught her on some salted shrimp. But again, I'm not keeping any fish today, so here I'm just gonna release it. Well, look who's here. That is the Sum Fun pulling up next to me here in front of Salt Creek. Man, that boat is packed with anglers. Looks like they're searching for a place to anchor down. As you can see there, I am tethered to this lone piece of kelp that's on the surface. Everywhere else, if you look, if you look around me, there is no other kelp on the surface. Well, something's been out there for about 40, 45 minutes now. It's been awfully quiet. Yeah, fish has been pretty slow today. Check it out. Water temperature is now at about 71 degrees. I'm in 29 foot depth. Okay. I am going to pull up anchor here. Detach from the kelp. And then start trolling my way back. Today. Uh, 
saddles. I can fight. God damn it, we're still in the kill. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Check out that flock of dive bombers in the background as they approach my kayak. Pretty cool formation. So here's a quick recap of my my trip today out on the water. As you can see, it was a little different. I, I decided to go out west a little bit before heading north towards Salt Creek. Right now you can see my top speed was about 6 miles an hour with the wind at my back. I'm passing the boiler rocks and past the strand as I get into Salt Creek where I fish the kelp for a little bit before heading back. Covered a little bit more water today. You'll see here from the stats. I did right around 11 miles. So it was quite the workout. Hey guys, I'm back on land and I forgot to share with you while I was out there fishing on the, uh, just outside of the kelp paddies, my fishing line got stuck in this, in this PDL drive inside of the prop and I could not unravel it. It was really in there. So I had to take the prop off of the drive and just remove it that way. So this is just a, a quick tutorial on how to do that. And it's pretty straightforward if you have the right tools and You'll see I'm, I still need to clean up my yak, but I've already taken the drive out and you'll see that I have this tool and I got this from Navare Kayak Fishing. I'll put a link in the description. This is great. Now, of course, it's just, a, I, you have to unscrew this little nut here. And of course they make metal tools for that, but you don't want to bring that out on the ocean. It'll just rust away. So this plastic tool is great. And you'll see, you just put it in here and then, let me put this down and I start unscrewing it. It's 
pretty tight. There we go. All right, so just remove it. Now you have to be careful out on the water that you don't drop the washer or the nuts into the ocean because yeah, this is right over a hole in your yak where the drive fits in so it could easily fall into the ocean. Once you do that, you just pull this out and you can see I already have all this eelgrass in here. And by the way, this is something you should do after every trip. I always open up this prop to remove any eelgrass or kelp that may have been stuck in here or caught into the prop. And you'll see this removes as well. I'll show you what I do with that in a minute. But there you go. So the braid was all over here. I just grabbed the whole clump. And the cool thing is with, without the prop there, you could just remove it and then untangle it without having this in the way. So the next thing I do is I take this corrosion inhibitor. This is by CRC Marine. And I spray down the pin here. I forget what this is called. I'll have to tell you later. But when well, you want to make sure you spray that down. And then I'll just spray the washer and the nut as well. But really, this is the important one. So once you spray that down, you just put it back inside of this slot here. Here we go. Just like that. And then it aligns with this, with the prop here. So you just put it back in place. Push it down. Reposition the washer. And then the nut. Cut the braid, but yeah, I want to avoid that. So I just removed the prop out on the water using this great little tool. By the way, when you do order this, it comes with two plastic or polyethylene nuts that are great for backup. If you ever do drop that in the water, you're going to want to have spares. So, and they'll all fit nicely inside of this watertight container. Well, as I finish rinsing down my kayak, I'd like to thank you for watching. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. And do me a favor, if you could, give this video a thumbs up. It would really help out the channel. Thanks again.